crafty friends welcome to magenta day in rainbow week slash fortnight i appreciate that magenta isn't actually a color in the rainbow spectrum but it is a color of ink that i have so i'm going to include it this is the card i made this morning and i thought i would show you how i made it and maybe throw in a few adjustments from a card blank, I'm using a five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch smooth white cardstock card blank. And I've chopped another one in half to create this panel, which is gonna sit on top. And from this panel, I'm going to cut this aperture. This is a Sizzix die. It's a mixed media one and it cuts flowers. And I'm gonna line that up on there. It has sort of a cut off here and a cut off here which to my mind means it's supposed to go in the top right hand corner. These are the kind of straight edges of the die. So I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. So there it is. There's the aperture, which is really pretty and delicate. A couple of the flower centers here didn't punch out, but that doesn't matter. I'll leave them there. They look absolutely fine. Off camera, just to save us some time, I have put some foam tape on the back. And I've put little bits here and there within the aperture pattern so that it is supported from behind and doesn't flop down onto the background I'm going to create. For my magenta inks today, I'm going to use milled lavender and seedless preserves. And to start with, I'm just going to blend a light layer of milled lavender doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be a blotchy mixed media background. So it's just to provide a bit of colour in the background. To add some more texture and colour, I'm going to stencil through these sequin remnants. I've got a couple of different sizes that I want to use today. These I've collected over the years from various places, charity shops. There's a shop on Etsy where I go sometimes that you can buy a bundle of different size sequin remnants for not much money so that's quite a useful stencil to have in your stash and I'm gonna add this larger one with milled lavender to create some tone on tone circles So I'm not going to need the whole of this piece of mixed media today. So I'll keep what I don't use. I'll pop it in my pouch of pretties and pull it out when I want some purpley mixed media for a project. So there we have some light circles. And now I'm going to add these smaller circles. And I'm going to use the seedless preserves for this. I'm not going to do it all over. Just create a bit of variation. So this was the bit of mixed media I produced this morning for the card that I showed you already. And I didn't use the smaller circles on it, I just used the larger circles with the milled lavender and seedless preserves. Is that what it is? Yes it is. So there's a little bit of difference there. Next thing we're going to do is spot it on some water and that will lift some of the colour to give even more texture and variation. And I'm going to blast that with my hairdryer because the next thing I want to do is heat emboss. So I've got an embossing folder here that has got a kind of blotchy pattern on it, almost paint splats which is quite fun it's by Sheena Douglas apparently this was a charity shop find and I'm going to add some embossing ink to it so I'm going to add it to my brayer here this is just Versamark re-inker get that coated on my brayer and then roll that over 
this side of the embossing folder this is where the blotches are raised up so they will push into my cardstock and make dents or debossing this embossing folder is a bit warped it doesn't matter when you're embossing at all but when you're rolling a brayer over it, it might mean that some of it has gone on the bits that I don't want. But we can see that when I add the embossing powder and brush any bits off that I don't want with a paintbrush. I'm going to cut this down a bit because that won't fit into my embossing folder. And I'm going to put it on the dry side, the side that I haven't put ink on, face up. And that way, as I close it, I can track it where I want it and not smudge the ink. Right, I'll run this through my cuttle bug. So that's filled up the embossed or debossed parts nicely with gold. But as I said, the brayer has made some marks and they're a bit straight, so they're a bit harsh. Um, I don't mind having extra bits of embossing powder stuck here and there because that's, you know, that's the messy mixed media look that I'm going for today. But I don't want uh, unintentional straight bits. I'll just tap off excess. So that's ready now to be heated with my heat tool. A question the other day about what this is that I put my embossing in to heat it. It's just a non-stick baking tray that I picked up very cheaply from a local supermarket and I do my heating in this because it's made of metal so it gets hot and I think it helps having the heat coming from both sides so you can see how unwarped this piece of paper is so I think that helps with the warping and it speeds up the heating embossing process plus it means I don't have to hold it with my fingers or tweezers or what have you so I can leave it untouched in there and not disturb any embossing and also if there's any stray bits of embossing powder they seem to stay in here rather than being blown across my craft room so this is just a, a handy little helper for heat embossing so there we have some gorgeous gold. Now this is going to go behind my aperture like this. So you, you can see already that this is a lot lighter than that. And on this, the embossing was a lot more patchy because when I ran my embossing folder through my cuttle bug, I didn't put enough shims in, and so it didn't emboss very deeply. And it does look really lovely. So all we've really got is the outline of the splat shapes. So it's a less dense, less intense gold. Whereas with this one, I added a couple of bits of cardstock, which meant the embossing folder was able to apply more pressure to this and the ink transferred right into the, the debossed bits. So two different looks, same technique. I just added a bit of extra cardboard when I ran my embossing folder through the die cutting machine. So all I need to do now really here is choose a bit of this that I would like to show through my flowers. So this bit will do nicely and I'm just going to peel off all the release paper from my foam tape and then I can press this down on there. Okay so that's done and it's ready to go on there. I think that'll do nicely. I press that down and I'm going to cut a bit of card to go over this area so it's all level. And I'm going to run my ATG tape runner over the back and then 
put this on my card front. Okay, so there we have a square-ish. I did chop a little bit off the bottom because this panel was a bit short. So a squarish card compared to this card here. For my sentiment, I gold heat embossed on a bit of cardstock that I'd coloured with the seedless preserves, but I'm thinking I might just go for some milled lavender. Just going over this bit of card to de-ink my purple blender a bit to get rid of any of the darker purples that are hiding in the bristles. And I'll uh, keep this card for something else. Nothing ever goes to waste. Now I'll load this up with milled lavender and give this a gentle blush of colour. I think that will do. I'm going to square off the corners of this so that I can use it as a jig and get it right into the corner of my stamping platform. So I'll pop that on there and run that through my mini Gemini. So I'll pop that in there, tape it down so it doesn't shift at all. I could use my magnets, in fact I will pop one there. Then I'm going to put my die cut in here. Get that where I want it. Give it a good going over with corn flour to remove any grease, dry any ink, get rid of any static. And then I've got a little stamp that says just for you in a scripty font. And I'm going to line that up on my die cut here. And the reason I'm using the jig is just to keep everything still. This little die cut is too small to kind of tape down and stamp on or magnet down so I'm just keeping it still with the jig getting my stamp lined up and then I'll stamp it in embossing ink so there we have my sentiment just for you embossed in gold and I'm going to go around the edge with a bit of this gilding wax. To give it a bit of definition and add a bit more sparkle and shine. The gold and the magenta tie the background behind the flowers and the foreground together nicely. I want to give that little banner something to sit on so I've got a little label die here and I'm going to cut it out of the vellum and on this one I stuck the label to the vellum and then put craft foam behind it but I think on this one I'm going to put craft foam behind the label and stick that to the vellum and then the vellum directly to the front just for a little bit of difference and we'll see what that looks like. Now where to put it? I think I might go for maybe there. But if I want it coming, I think it needs to go a bit lower on this card. Or higher. Could go up there. Yeah, I think I'll put it up there. I'm going to use my Crafters Companion tape here because if I get any on the vellum it won't show through. So, so this one I put there, but I think that just makes everything a bit square or rectangular on this card. So I want to elongate this out slightly. So I think there, I just want to make sure I get it straight. Yeah, I think I prefer the craft foam in between the label and the vellum. So on this card, I added gold Nouveau drops for a bit of bling, a bit of dimension, gloss, shine, shimmer. But I'm going to make my own out of milled lavender coloured cardstock. I might mix in a few gold ones, but I'm thinking a few more light purple ones would look good. So I will pop some double-sided tape on the back 
so my enamel dots come out sticky and cut them using this die. Right, let's choose a few. And now we'll pop some glossy accents on the top which will dry lovely and clear and give them that enamel dot look. So here we go, two cards made using the same supplies and the same techniques but achieving two different looks. You'll have to let me know which one you prefer. We've got a darker one here, more intense, and a lighter, more ethereal one here. I really like them both. I like the lightness of this, but I like the compactness of this. At the moment, the glossy accents are a bit cloudy. I think this is a bottle that's a bit old, but they do dry clear when they when they go dry. And so the lilac-y, no, lavender-y colour of the dots will show through. Right, that's magenta day done and dusted. Tomorrow, I'm going to break out my brown distress oxides. And we're going to go for a brown day. So I hope you'll join me for that. If you want to see more from me and get notified whenever I publish new videos, hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.